Welcome back to another Diablo 4 build guide. Today we're going to be talking about the Chain Lightning Pyro Enchantment Sorceress build. This is a very popular build for many reasons. It is an extremely well-rounded build with massive AoE DPS, single target DPS, as well as great survivability. Also, this quite possibly could be the most synergistic build throughout all the classes in Diablo 4. So if you plan on playing the Sorceress at launch, you are definitely going to want to stick around for this step-by-step -step guide. Also, if you want to make sure to stay up to date with the best Diablo 4 build guides to prepare you for the upcoming launch, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. With that being said, let's get straight into it. For level 1, you're going to put 1 point into Arc Lash, which unleashes Arcing Lightning Attack that deals 42% damage to enemies in front of you. Every 10 times Arc Lash swipes, it stuns all enemies hit for 2 seconds. This is arguably one of the best basic skills throughout all of the classes within Diablo 4, and one of the few basic attacks that you'll actually want to max out as it is a core aspect to this build. Level 2, you'll put a point into Enhanced Arc Lash. If Arc Lash's initial swipe critically strikes, it will swipe an additional time. This is great as you'll be utilizing that crit proc very often. Level 3 will be unlocking Chain Lightning, which unleashes a stream of lightning that deals 36% damage and chains between nearby enemies and you up to 5 times, prioritizing enemies. Chain Lightning is going to be your main source of AoE damage, and during boss fights will be your main single target DPS, as it's going to chain between you and the boss. Level 4 you're going to spec into the Enhanced Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning gains a 3% increased critical strike chance per bounce. Then at level 5 you'll be specking into the Greater Chain Lightning, if Chain Lightning bounces off you, its next hit deals 10 times percent increased damage. This is going to be extremely useful during your boss fights. Level 6, you'll be putting a second skill point into Chain Lightning for the increased damage. This will also unlock your defensive skill tree, which we'll be using three of these skills from. Level 7, you'll be unlocking Teleport, which transforms you into Lightning, becoming unstoppable and surging to the target location, dealing 25% damage around you upon arrival. Movement is a major part of this game, and unlocking Teleport first out of the other two skills feels far more rewarding. Teleport is hands down the best movement skill within Diablo 4, and provides Unstoppable, which can help you get out of crowd control effects. Level 8, you'll be unlocking Frost Nova, which unleashes a torrent of frost freezing enemies around you for 3 seconds. I prefer unlocking this next over ice armor as you can synergize this with teleport into a frost nova combo. And with your basic attack being so up close, you are going to want the crowd control effect to help ease your time in combat. Level 9 you'll be unlocking ice armor. A barrier of ice forms around you for 6 seconds, absorbing 30% of your base life and damage. While Ice Armor is active, 5% of your damage dealt is added to its barrier. This is a great defensive skill as the barrier gets stronger with the more DPS you are doing. And with the way this class is built, you'll be doing a ton of DPS. Level 10, you'll get Enhanced Teleport. Teleport's cooldown is decreased by 0.5 seconds per enemy hit, up to 3 seconds. You'll be using this as an engage tool, so having this cooldown reduction is important, so it'll be back up in time to escape any bad situations that can appear. Level 11, you'll be getting Enhanced Ice Armor for the Mana Regeneration while active. Mana Regeneration is going to be a great asset to the Sorceress, as using more spells allow for more DPS, or allowing you to use more defensive spells depending on your situation. Level 12, you'll be getting Enhanced Frost Nova. Killing enemies frozen by Frost Nova reduces its cooldown by 1 second, up to 4 seconds per cast. This allows for more built-in CDR into this skill, as the cooldown is fairly long. Level 13 and 14 will be used to put 2 points into Chain Lightning. At level 15, you'll be putting one point into Firebolt. The enchantment bonus is as follows. Any direct damage from skills apply additional 23% burning damage over 8 seconds. This is specifically used for the enchantment bonus and you'll not actually have this on your skill bar. This synergizes insanely well with Chain Lightning as it will cause each enemy hit to take burning damage over 8 seconds along with your other damaging skills. What I really enjoy about this build is the fact that you begin to utilize each element for its best aspects and can finally see the build synergy come together. Level 16 will be used to max out Chain Lightning. Level 17 you'll unlock Mystical Frost Nova. Frost Nova makes enemies vulnerable for 4 seconds, increases 6 seconds against bosses. This synergizes extremely well with your Engage tool, as making enemies vulnerable will increase the damage taken from you by 20%. This is a massive combo as you teleport into a mob using this skill, and then proccing Chain Lightning or Arc Slash into a great combo. Level 18 you'll unlock Shimmering Teleport. After teleporting, you gain a 30% damage reduction for 5 seconds. The more defensive bonuses you have, the better, especially as you progress through the game on harder world tiers. Level 19, you'll unlock Mystical Ice Armor. Damage against vulnerable enemies contributes 50% more to Ice Armor's barrier. This synergizes super well with the upgraded Frost Nova that's going to be making all the enemies that you hit vulnerable. Level 20 through level 22, you'll be using this to max out the Glass Cannon passive. The trade-off seems to be worth it, as the more damage you're able to do, the more shielding 
something you'll receive from the ice armor and later on you'll be able to have the ice armor applied a lot more frequently. Level 23 you'll be getting the devastation passive. Level 24 you'll unlock unstable currents for your ultimate ability. Lightning surges within you for 10 seconds whenever you cast a shock skill, a random core, conjuration, or mastery shock skill is also cast at the same time. So while having this active and using one of your shocking skills, you'll be able to produce a skill such as Ball of Lightning or even producing a Lightning Spear just from using your damaging skills to begin with. Level 25, you'll unlock Prime Unstable Currents. Unstable Currents increase your attack speed by 25% while active. This synergizes extremely well with your basic attack Arc Lash. With that being said, level 26 to level 29 will be used to max out Arc Lash. Level 30, you'll be unlocking your second slot for your enchantment bonus. So for this skill point, we'll be using this to unlock Firewall. Each time an enemy takes burning damage, there's a 5% chance to spawn two firewalls underneath them for 3 seconds. Because any enemy you are fighting should constantly be burning, you have a very good odd to activate this bonus from your enchantment. Level 31 through 33 will be used to max out the Fiery Surge passive. Killing a burning enemy increases your mana regeneration by 30% for 3 seconds. Because everything you are fighting will be burning, this passive has perfect synergy providing for more mana regeneration, allowing you to cast more spells. Level 34 you'll be used to unlock Vire's Mastery. Close enemies take 10 times percent increased damage from your shock skills and dealing 20% less damage to you. Critical strikes increase these bonuses by 25% for 3 seconds. As your main engage tool and basic attack is all up close and personal, this is going to provide not only some crazy DPS, but also help with more survivability. Level 35 through level 37 will be used to max out the element dominance passive. This will provide your core skills to deal 9% increased damage when you cast above 50 mana. Level 38 you'll put 1 point into the Pyrene passive. You deal increased burn burning damage to enemies for each second they remain burning up to 5% after 5 seconds. This is mainly used to get the passive that follows it. Level 39 through level 41 will be used to max out the warmth passive. Every one second you heal for 0.9% of your maximum life for each nearby enemy that is burning. Healing increased to 1.8% from bosses. Level 42 will be getting a Lined Elements passive. You gain 1% damage reduction against elites for each second you haven't taken damage from them, up to 40%. Level 43 through level 45 you'll be unlocking Protection passive. Using a cooldown grants 30% of your maximum life as a barrier for 2 seconds. I really like this passive as if you space out your cooldowns enough and your ice armor, you can essentially have a permanent shield barrier. Level 46 you'll be unlocking the Coursing Currents passive. Hitting enemies with a shock skill increases your critical strike chance by 1%. Resets upon again a critical strike. Level 47 through level 49 will be used to max out electrocution. Enemies deal 15% less damage for 5 seconds after being critically struck by your shock skills. As you notice, the last 11 levels were based on making sure you have enough defensive passives to ensure your survivability. This is going to make sure you have a very smooth time during your leveling process into the end game. The reason this is going up to level 49 is because you already start at level 1, so your first level is actually going to be level 2. I am really excited to play this build because as a whole it excels in so many areas, and I truly believe this is going to be one of the best leveling builds at the start of launch. Now I want to get into some gear options that you're going to have during your playthrough as a sorceress. I will only be covering gear that is obtainable from the progression through the main quest. I don't want to be discussing any gear that is luck based as the game is not out yet and that topic will be best in the future. First let's go over the defensive codex of powers. We have aspects of the protector. Damaging an elite enemy grants your barrier absorbing up to x damage from 10 seconds. This effect can only happen once every 30 seconds. This is great as it provides another barrier which can alleviate more time for which you do not have a barrier active due to cooldowns. Next we have the aspect of deflecting barrier. While you have a barrier active there is a 7-13% to chance to ignore incoming direct damage from distance enemies. Since a lot of our defensive power comes from having a barrier on frequently you'll be utilizing this aspect very often. Then we have snow veiled aspect. Casting Ice Armor makes you unstoppable for 2-3 to three seconds. Receiving Unstoppable is extremely strong in this game as CC from enemies leads to deaths quite frequently, so having another skill that can help stop this is extremely strong. Next Codex of Power and one of the strongest ones for this build is the Incendiary Aspect. Lucky Hit, Burning Damage has up to 5-10% to chance to restore 10 mana. Because this build will provide burning damage to all enemies you hit, you have a great opportunity to regain the mana which will result in more skill usage. This aspect goes along with the last one but even better. Prodigy's Aspect. Using a cooldown restores 15 to 25 mana. Being able to restore mana from using cooldowns is extremely strong for this build and really extremely strong for any class. So this is going to be a must have aspect. For the first offensive codex of power we have the aspect of control. You deal 30 to 40% more damage to immobilized, stunned, 
or frozen enemies. Mixing this with your Frost Nova, which freezes enemies, is going to make you deal a lot more damage. The next Codex of Power, we have Aspect of Expectant. Attacking enemies with a basic skill increases the damage of your next core skill, cast by 5 to 10%, up to 30%. Because we utilize our basic attacks so much within this build, receiving that damage buff to our core skill, aka Chain Lightning, is a must have and if you're needing to imprint something on your gear i would go with this one next aspect we have edge masters skills deal up to 10 to 20 percent increased damage based on your available primary resource receiving the maximum benefit when you have full primary resource because we have some good mana regeneration within this build dealing more damage with the more mana we have is always a great option lastly we have the elementalist aspect Core or mastery skills cast at or above 100 mana gain a 20% to 40% increased critical strike chance. As this build already has great synergy with critical strikes, having that initial critical strike chance increased off of 100 mana or above is just fantastic. Next we'll be discussing the best stats to focus on during your playthrough so you're aware of what gear fits this build best. Weapon damage is going to be great as your skill base damage scales with this. Attack speed is a nice stat as you utilize your basic attack frequently. Critical strike chance and damage is going to be amazing for this build as you already have a decent amount of both within your skills alone. Vulnerable damage synergizes extremely well with Frost Nova, so that's also a good asset. Damage as a whole is always fantastic. Damage versus elites, damage versus burning, damage with fire, damage with lightning, and damage with core skills. These are all going to be amazing stats for this build and synergize extremely well throughout your build, providing for some great damage output. One of the best things about this build is the variety of stats you can choose from. So finding a stat that benefits this build is going to be extremely easy as you have so many to choose from. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope this build guide helps you prepare for the official launch of Diablo 4. I'll see you next time.